Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and what I have set out here on the table is a variety of different browns if you want to refer to it as that. Um, yeah, in the composting world there's this concept of greens and browns and um, chemically speaking the greens represent nitrogen content and the browns represent carbon content and when you start transferring some of that thinking over into worm composting, the browns are a pretty important aspect to what you give your worms. Because the browns are not only a carbon source as far as food goes, but it also doubles as their bedding in most cases. And it just seems to me like lately I've been a little bit skimpy on giving my worm bins carbon-based bedding materials so I've decided that I'm going to try to put a concerted effort into putting a greater emphasis on um, including a little bit more bedding with my worm bin maintenance activities. And to try to reach that goal, you can see I've um, taken leaves from my outside leaf collection bag, bought them in here. I've been um, hacking up chunks of cardboard. I've been running newspaper through the shredder. So I've got a whole wide variety of different types of carbon-based bedding materials that we can include in the next feeding of my worm bins. The bins I plan on working on today are the ones you see here in front of me. The, uh, the abbreviation ANC stands for African Nightcrawlers. Here you can see it's not only a bin of African Nightcrawler worms, but also one of my so-called cocoon nurseries. And really all that means is that the last time I harvested uh, a bin or bins that had African night crawlers in them. The worms that I was able to separate from the castings got launched off into a new container, which is here, and then I held on to all the castings that I had harvested at that time. And rather than using those castings in the garden, I set them aside with the assumption that the castings had cocoons mixed in them to give the material some time to let the cocoons hatch and let the baby worms emerge and then try to round them up before using the material out in the garden. So I'm going to be pulling these two systems up onto the bench to get to work on them in a moment. Let me get a glove on and uh, we'll get to work. So now these systems have been going this way for 57 days now. And um, the mission today, after 10 days since our last check-in, is going to be to feed the other system that the worms are in. But in the case of this bin that only has the cocoons where I refer to this as my cocoon nursery, the objective is to figure out whether or not the system needs to continue the way it's been, or is it possible that we're nearing the end? And one of the, um, one of the main variables to make me make that decision, one way or the other, is whether or not we observe worms. Little baby ones out here, are they emerging from their cocoons? Are they still hatching and making their way into the feeding area? or have we given enough time for that process to um, reach its end over here on this side of the bin. So there's, um, you know, right off the bat, a little baby worm here to, to greet us, perhaps to tell us <laughs> that additional time is needed here in this material. And, you know, 57 days, here's another one, 57 days, you would think, is a pretty good amount of time. Assuming that the um, the cocoons in here were brand new, freshly um, deposited into the material, and that that entire length of 57 days was needed to give them time to get to that point where they would hatch. I think a, a more safe assumption is that um, a large portion of the cocoons that probably ended up in here were already you know, in the process of getting to that point where they're going to be ready to hatch. So I, you know, I have to assume that some of them hatched shortly after being placed into this container, and maybe some of them are just um, hatching now, or just hatched very recently. And it's those that might warrant a little bit more time to give the um, worms a chance to make their way over into the collection area. The collection area over here, we did apply some fresh food and bedding to it last time we were in here. I think grit as well. Um, and 
something I've been doing, here's a cocoon, which I believe is still not yet hatched. Um, I've been doing this in a number of my different systems, but this is the only system where I've been maintaining a plastic cover over the finished castings to maintain moisture. Some people have been commenting in those other systems that the material has just grown too dry to permit that, um, the hatching of the cocoons in that material. So here, since this material has been kept fairly damp, my hope is that, um, you know, it's promoting the, the hatching of the cocoons in the material as opposed to hindering that activity. So besides those couple small worms that we observed on the top surface, I guess I'm also sort of looking for some sort of visual confirmation of the presence of more baby worms down here in the material. And I, I do keep observing what appears to be cocoons within the material. Very, very dark in color, this one that I, um, I just pulled out. It's, um, it's somewhat encrusted in castings, so it's difficult to see what it looks like now. <laughs> but before I covered it in castings, I was able to tell that it was um, fairly dark in color. The stuff out here on the edges is a little bit more dry. But the material right down the middle seems to be really cozy and damp. Stuff that you would imagine the worms to be pretty comfortable in. And hopefully it's just the absence of food that um, triggers the reaction within the baby worms to go seek um, a food supply that's perhaps a little bit more um, generous, which would be over here. Really, really light colored cocoons are the ones that were um, just very recently deposited into the material by the worms, but the, the really dark colored cocoons are the ones that are nearing the point in time when the baby worms are going to emerge from them. So I, I've repeatedly said every time I've gone in here to inspect the material that I'm in no particular hurry to get to let this process, you know, finish. I'm um, and I'm still kind of in that same line of thinking, even though in those other systems where I've been allowing the um, the castings to dry out and maybe I'm sort of stacking the deck against myself. And maybe that dryness is going to prevent the emergence of the babies from the cocoons. Here I believe the conditions are actually quite optimal for the um, process to play out. And play out, um, hopefully, in its entirety throughout the bin. However, that one aspect of it, which is the migration of the worms out of the material over into the finished compost, is... An aspect that's a little bit difficult to control. Some people have suggested placing some sort of baiting material right into the middle of the bin. You know, maybe I've managed to collect a bunch of worms here, but I could also possibly collect a bunch by having some form of a bait laid out for them resting on top of the um, material out here in the middle. Because I do feel like we're approaching the finish line on this. I mean, you saw me pull a few small worms off the paper and then you'll, you just saw me pull a baby worm right out of the material and I bet you there's a good number of babies that are still so small that I just keep missing them but then there's also the matter of um, a good number of fairly dark colored cocoons that I keep spotting too all over the place so it's always fun to look through this stuff because it's it's almost like a hide-and-seek game you know it's not just a whole bunch of big fat worms resting out there on the surface greeting you, but it's more like um, a bunch of baby worms that are sort of hiding within the material that you're trying to seek out and find them. And I could probably spend a whole bunch of time exploring this stuff and trying to see what I could see. But I want to um, I want to move ahead to the next step. Oh, there are two another itsy bitsy baby worm. So. I, I think it's these little guys that are giving me um, validation, basically, to tell me that this is working and it is still in process. 
and that it is probably a, a good idea to give it a little bit more time. Last time we were in here 10 days ago I reinforced this feeding area with additional food and bedding and grit and everything and I, I even enlarged its area so I had push, pushed a lot of this castings material off to the to the side stacked it up a little bit higher so that I can increase the size of this baiting area. I figured as the babies congregate as they feed and grow it's probably a good idea to give them a little bit more space but I wanted to see how the food supply in here is holding up it would also be nice to take a see a look see and check out how many worms have come together in here the first thing we're going to see is a good number of fairly large worms worms that were probably um, still pretty small when they uh, when they wound up here and here originally slipping through the the filter through the screen and taking a ride along with the finished compost into the material and maybe growing to the size that they are now here within this bin there's also also that possibility that some of them were pretty good in size already when they slipped through my screening process and made their way into here there's also a good number of pretty small ones in here as well which is really what we're after so a couple of the things I found here are stuff like avocado pit, which is now crumbling pretty readily in my hand. This is like a um, the pit out of a plum. Yeah, plum. So I, uh, I assume if we check this side, we're going to see more of the same. There's a good amount of bedding in here still. A couple large size worms combined with a whole bunch of little tiny ones. I could see large amounts of remaining grit stuck to the paper in here so from a grit perspective I believe we're in pretty good shape over here the food though I don't know I can't remember what I placed in here for food last time but uh it does seem like they might be running a little bit low everything I see in here seems to be either worms castings grit or bedding I don't really see much of anything as far as leftover food bits. I held off on bringing food down here because I thought I would do this inspection of this bin first before heading up to the refrigerator and bringing some stuff down. So I didn't know if I would want to maybe make the decision today to bring this system to a close or whether I would choose to let it continue and then if I did whether it would still need food or not. But since we've we've um, made the decision to let it go and continue, it does seem like a probably a good idea to um, beef up the food supply in here. So I don't really see much of anything. I mean, some of the stuff that we're seeing, like those pits, those you know are not bedding. Obviously, those are scraps of food, but. Those are not the types of foods that I imagine the worms can take very good advantage of, at least not right away. We've got to give them some easier to eat foods, stuff that will break down a little bit more readily and become available as a food source for these little guys. I mean, they're not starving because they could always, you know, utilize the cardboard itself and the paper as a food source too. I don't know if this is the same... Uh, plum pit that we saw earlier maybe not maybe it's another one so yeah I've actually now also managed to <laughs> move a lot of the casting material that's collected in this baiting area back into the collection of castings as I've sorted out the remaining bedding bits from the material but I've also unfortunately distanced a bunch of the babies from the area where I'd really like them to be something I usually try not to do but I guess I got a little distracted <laughs> but I do like the idea um, of actually just continuing to increase the size of the the feeding area the collection area because all these babies are just going to continue to grow right and um, and eat so giving them more space makes good sense, and giving them food makes good sense. So maybe we'll just do one more um, 
expansion of their space, but we'll do so on a somewhat greater, grander scale today by, um, by increasing the amount of material that we use to set this up by a whole lot. And that should definitely increase the um, attractiveness of this side of the bin for them, hopefully. So let's see, how are we going to do that? I'll start out by laying in some of the bedding we're going to use. But then I'll have to pause for a moment to go upstairs to get some food. I'll get the food that we're going to feed the, the adult ANCs with in the other bin. But I'll also bring some stuff that we can include for these little guys. And then maybe we'll even enhance our collection technique here a bit by also um, bringing down a piece of melon and doing what a lot of the viewers have suggested, which is just plopping that out here into the middle and see what that does. Because I don't really feel like we're going to need to give this system a great deal more time. It does seem like it's working just as planned and working well. But it doesn't seem like a whole lot more time is going to be needed to let the process come to a close. Then at some point we'll be able to just haul all these little worms out of here. Get them relocated into that other system along with the rest of their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and everybody. And then, uh, and then this material can get used out in the garden to nourish my plants. So I've got all kinds of awesome bedding materials here. And I'm going to give them a little sample of each. And that should really uh, increase the appeal of this side of the bin. But before I go any further, I think I've set up a nice foundation to put the food into. It's at this time I'm going to head upstairs to the kitchen, go grab some yummy morsels that we can finish this up with, and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I've brought down a, an assortment of different things, but no melon rinds. I just didn't feel like digging that deep into my refrigerator to get those things. You know why? Because I found a few things that I could probably easily substitute and create just as an interesting a little top layer attracting area. Maybe using a couple pieces of banana peel, maybe a couple pieces of strawberry. And I bet you they'll have the same basic effect as melon, hopefully. So I tried to uh, save myself a little bit of time digging around in the freezer by substituting what we're going to place out here into the middle area. I've also got some soiled paper towels here that we're going to also use as enhanced uh, additional bedding here within the feeding area. So um, I'm going perhaps a little bit over the top on applying bedding at this point. But in a way, I'm almost treating this as the start. Of, I, I see some people um, use a method that I've never used, which is to sort of start establishing one end of the bin as like almost the replacement and then just using the other end of the bin as sort of the source for obtaining finished castings from and then treat it as almost a conveyor belt. Keep pushing the newest stuff over and as it further breaks down it gets abandoned by the worms because the more interesting stuff is over here and then the finished castings just get removed from the other side. So I'm not necessarily adopting that as my method going forward but this definitely um, has aspects of it which follow that same basic thinking. So I'm just taking a little this, a little that. I'm going to give them some veggies, some fruits. We've given them even more carbon, even more bedding over there. Perhaps we can even drop in some of this coffee. And there was a good number of worms in here, and the food that I added 10 days ago does appear to have all been depleted. So I don't want to be too cheap or skimpy. I, I do have faith in the fact that the worms that are congregating on this side of the bin are going to be able to do away with all this stuff in no time. I'm fairly confident of that. But for now, we're not going to go overboard. We're going to trust that these nitrogen-based kitchen scraps combined with all that carbon-based food is going to make for a nice 
adequate feeding to help spur on the ongoing migration of the baby worms out of the finished compost. So the stuff I'm sprinkling in now is crushed eggshell. Crushed eggshell is pretty important, especially for the baby worms. I guess just as important for all the worms. They need it to be able to digest the food in their gizzards. So to wrap up here, I'm going to even build this up further. So this is a little bit of a departure from what you normally see me do because I'm usually really skimpy on the on the bedding. So I can almost see the comments now. I can see all kinds of people putting in emojis with clapping and thumbs up saying, dude, you finally got wise. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe, maybe I just needed a kick in the pants because I've had some issues lately where it just seems like um, excess moisture, absence of sufficient bedding, a whole bunch of variables have been leading up to some really bad outcomes and I, I'd really like to try to turn that around and maybe this is the start of some some really good um, improvements so we'll see. I got one more paper towel over here and you know sometimes I do like to try somewhat visually perhaps not so much as a barrier but just to sort of create a little bit of a division between what I consider to be more or less the finished compost and what's considered as the the feeding area. So I'm just going to use that little piece of paper right there as sort of our dividing line to help me better see where the um, the feeding area ends and where the finished compost begins. Not, not to say that it would be very hard to see it visually, but I just I imagine some point in the future where I do want to be able to, you know, pull this stuff out and relocate it into the other active African Nightcrawler system and um, and then harvest these castings and this is I guess meant to see if it'll maybe um, help make that a little bit easier at some point in the near future. So I guess the one thing we've done over here is kind of litter this material on the very very edge with um, some bits of bedding and even a whole bunch of worms that got pushed out of the feeding area but I think they'll get wise to where the action is and they'll just make their way back over there my only hope is that that piece of paper doesn't end up being an obstacle my hope is that they'll just sort of nibble their way through it or it'll soak through or something or they'll just go around it underneath it or whatever and they'll be able to make their way over into the feeding area without becoming without that piece of paper towel becoming a, a hindrance. Sometimes I'll actually puncture whatever it is that I'm placing in there. Um, but this time I've just not bothered. This is kind of a fun nursery bin, which I might just let continue on if we keep seeing this sort of results. If we keep seeing babies emerging, um, keep seeing babies appearing out here in the material we keep observing fairly dark color cocoons that appear to still need a little bit more time to get you know to the point where the babies can emerge from them then maybe we'll just continue on let me just get one more thing that i almost forgot that i'd really like to include here as well so the stuff that i was referring to is this stuff right here it's known as ne neem cake some people call it neem cake the packaging says neem seed meal and maybe I should have actually um, kind of sprinkled this stuff right into the food. But, you know, even though it is a material that supposedly is um, a delicacy for the worms, the worms like to eat it, it's really there with the intention of letting the mites that are in the bin eat it. Because it's supposed to interfere with the reproduction of the mites, hopefully limiting their numbers as a net effect. So I, um, I've been trying to adopt the use of this stuff in many of my systems. And the way I'm sprinkling it in on top over here usually results in a bunch of mold growing on the top of the container. Um, so it's for that reason I think I'm going to see if I can blend it in a little bit here. Even though the mites that I'm trying to feed it to are usually seen right there on the surface. Um, a lot of people say blend it in, but maybe we'll even add a little bit more just to the surface and leave it there. Even though we know that it's going to end up resulting in some mold on the top of the surface. 
next time we come back in here that's fine I'm not too worried about it so um, the last thing we're going to do here is a little trick that some people have been suggesting which is to place some yummy items right out onto the top surface for the worms to be attracted to and it seemed to me like uh, a couple high sugar items such as strawberry bits as well as banana bits would probably um, have a really nice effect possibly drawing baby worms over into this general area versus needing them to make all the way make their way all the way over to the um, the feeding area so I feel like I've taken a tremendous amount of time over here because <laughs> it was fun I don't know I just um, I definitely enjoyed this check-in things do seem to be working as hoped working quite nicely um, and you know it's at this point I'll usually ask people to contribute their ideas and what their thinking is in terms of what they're seeing here do they think do they think what I'm doing here is um, is the right thing am I following the right steps to get the types of results that I'm striving for um, is there anything I could be doing differently or better I definitely value everyone's input on these types of topics I mean, it's the reason I created the channel in the first place was so that I can get feedback and input from the viewers on what I'm doing right what I'm doing wrong so hopefully everyone agrees that what's going on in here is looking good and is producing the desired results and is um, you know proceeding as it should so let's go get the adult worms out here and give them the rest of that food that I bought down here. All right, so here we have the adult worm bin. Same age as the nursery bin. And a little different in a number of ways. Does not have plastic coverings. We, um, we halted the use of plastic coverings last week when we started to sense that maybe things were getting a little bit exceedingly damp in here. So we thought that we'd give the material in here a little opportunity to begin drying. And that was also the rationale behind coating the top surface with a whole bunch of leaves last time we were in here. So I'm going to do what I normally do, which is kind of go through almost the entire bin, inspecting how things look, just to get a sense of the bin's overall well-being. So right away we're observing worms kind of hanging out throughout the material down here in the corner. Over here too we're just kind of continuing with just an overall general inspection of the bin. Does seem to be a little bit dry but as I make my way down to the lower reaches of the bin there appears to be a good amount of moisture down within the material. And worms hanging out within it too. Not a, a dense huge number of them but they're in there so they're not um, put off by the lack of moisture I've been running my bins really damp lately for the past I don't even know at this point perhaps even more than a year now ever since I kind of discovered the whole concept of covering my bins with plastic something that I had never ever done up until about a year and a half ago on my bins you would always find nothing more than a piece of newspaper a sheet of cardboard perhaps doubling up on one or both, but never anything um, other than those to cover up with. Always allowing for um, moisture to somehow sneak out, but I never really ended up with bins that were um, dangerously dry. People did often comment on my material as being a little bit perhaps drier than normal, but I always felt like I had really good results back in those days. And even though it, it was really um, intriguing to see how the worms really favored the uh, additional moisture that's created throughout the bin with the addition of the plastic coverings, leaving even the top surface very damp and um, appealing for the worms to hang out in, um, I think that the excess moisture also has the potential to bring with it um, certain drawbacks too. So I'm trying to wean myself a little bit off of the thrill of having really damp top surface and a whole bunch of worms hanging out there on the surface. And I'm trying to run my bins a little bit more dry now. 
And you can see this bin is already starting to benefit from my um, revised thinking on bedding. It must have been in the last visit that we um, we had already realized that jacking up the bedding supply in here is probably a good idea. So you can already see that there's a good amount of leftover bedding in here from last time. The last time we checked in here, this orange was still holding together. It was a half of an orange within its peel, holding together quite nicely, but now it's kind of falling apart into its individual segments, which is fine. I wasn't really striving to keep it as a single object. And that's actually going back to not the last feeding, but I believe the feeding prior, or maybe even the feeding prior to that. But when I tried to, um, I did revisit the video from the last feeding of this bin, but I had technical difficulties. The camera, for whatever reason, just stopped recording. That was interesting. When I said those last two words, the camera stopped. And I, I wonder if I might have just said those two words. <laughs> and uh, maybe I caused the stop of the recording. Yep, I did it again. <laughs> so it seems like I've really got to be careful to limit my use of those two words. Otherwise, the... Uh, the camera will just keep stopping and um, interfering with my work here. It's funny, I, I guess I'm still just sort of getting used to having a camera that responds to voice commands. So it's basically always listening and when it hears certain things it reacts. So I'm just going to have to be a little bit more careful to uh, limit my use of certain words such as those while I'm working in my bins. So I definitely like the way the material in this bin is really nice and loose and flaky, even where the most recent feeding has been placed. But let me just complete my thought before all that mumbo jumbo with the, re with rea uh, with the reactions of the camera um, <laughs> distracted me. Um, I, I did end up showing the color bars, you know, those ones when, those, one, those color bars that you see when the television show you're watching has some sort of a technical difficulty because I did actually lose all the footage um, showing what I had fed last time so I, I do remember seeing the orange briefly in the beginning of the last check-in and then shortly after that the footage cuts off and then um, and pretty much is lost all the way to the very end so I had just thrown together sort of a new ending to last week's check-in on these bins just to um, just to let the video end gracefully. <laughs> um, so I, I did not really get a chance to see what exactly I used as the foods last time. And I'm not really getting much of a sense of what, I, what it was here from looking through here either, because I don't see any leftovers. I mean, maybe I saw a little bit of stuff that looks like it might be coffee. And so that's pretty common because I do usually add good amounts of coffee. So, so to see leftovers of coffee is not unusual, I believe. Um, but, but nothing else other than that orange that definitely dates back to prior to the last feeding. So here we go. <laughs> Trying my new thing with um, much, much more bedding these days. And uh, let's just start dumping in today's feeding. Not only strawberries, not only banana peels, all frozen, but uh, also just random small scraps of stuff. Some peels from cucumbers, some stems of different types of veggies, and all kinds of goodies for the worms. So let's sprinkle in the remainder of the coffee for these little guys and even more bedding they're getting the coffee filter too but you know what I'd also like to make sure I give them grit I like to put it right onto the food that they're getting or near the food that they're getting and I've also got this neem seed meal I don't think I saw quite as many 
mites this time. I think last time we checked in, we did see a good number of mites, and it did um, it did make me feel a little bit disheartened and disappointed. Let's see. I'm trying to be really generous with the, the bedding these days, remember? So let's give them even more. I don't know about this, though. So I... um. So I want to try to include grit with the feedings to help them along. And, oops, I almost forgot. We've still got a little bit more food even. I had started thinking that that layer of leaves we just threw on top might be almost like a top cover to the feeding, but I've got a little bit more food to apply here. And uh, the neem seed meal, I've got a little bit left here. I don't know, maybe it is working. Maybe it's actually hindering the ongoing reproduction of the worms. Not the reproduction of the worms, the reproduction of the mites. So I'm going to keep on using it. The, um, the, the one thing I've definitely heard from others, though, is that um, they're not using the neem seed meal. They're using the neem seed oil. And they've had um, much quicker positive results than I've seen so far. Um, so maybe just, you know, having the neem seed meal, um, helps sort of in a long run, uh, kind of in a long term, um, including it with feedings on a regular basis. But if you need to really address perhaps a chronic issue in a shorter period of time, then maybe the, the neem seed oil is the way to go. So, uh, and, and I think there is a distinction between the types of neem seed oils that you can get as well, because I bought neem seed oil and didn't have luck with it. And some people have pointed out that you need the cold pressed neem seed oil if you want it to work in this way to battle your, battle the mites in your worm bins. Um, and the stuff I purchased was not cold pressed, so maybe that was the reason it didn't um, produce the types of results that I'd been hoping for. So. Uh, so, you know, I don't know why I put this to the side. <laughs> I had actually hoped to sort of hack it up and throw it in here as additional bedding, but you know what? I think we're good. I'm going to actually use it as something that I often do anyway, which is indicate where I fed by putting a coffee filter down. Part of my, um, part of one of my silly traditions that I've kind of um, not really done as frequently lately as I could. So I've got a little bit more of this neem seed meal here. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if memory serves me correctly, there was a whole bunch of mites cruising around in this bin the last time we checked in, and I just don't get that same sense. Like, maybe either the neem seed, neem seed meal is helping, or maybe the boost in bedding is helping, or maybe a combination of the both. But I'm really pleased at the fact that I'm not taken aback by, you know, a swarm of mites cruising around in my worm bin, so oh, it's a relief, I've got to say. So now, lots of dry bedding, lots of cardboard, lots of stuff in there, but correspondingly, a good amount of frozen fruits and veggies too, which will also be emitting moisture, hopefully creating a nice balance in here. So we'll see how things look. Um, but for now, I'm gonna continue down the road of covering with newspaper, covering with cardboard, and, you know, allowing the bin to run a little bit drier than you've seen in my videos um, recently. So, um, the, the worms in here looked happy and healthy, and we've given them a lot more surface area and volume within the bin to move around by adding all this extra bedding. And I'm just gonna continue this way and see if I can start restoring some of my older ways running bins a little bit dry, using a lot more bedding. Those things had worked for me really well in the past, and it does seem like it might have been a mistake to turn my back on those practices. So we'll see if this um, this bin can possibly start showing us that we're on the right track again. And I will be doing this in all of my systems, I believe. So you'll see more of it going forward in the future. All right, everyone, that's it for my ANCs, African night crawlers. Um, if you enjoyed the video, Please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.